Hello, I'm Amber Stoneberg and welcome to Accounts Payable Invoice Data Entry. In this task, we'll be able to enter in new invoices for vendors, credit memos, debit memos, and adjustments to previously updated invoices. To navigate, we'll expand under Modules, Accounts Payable, Main, and Invoice Data Entry. If batches are enabled in the Accounts Payable Setup options, we'll be presented with a batch window. Select the next batch number from the system and enter in an optional batch comment. This can be useful if there are multiple batches being entered in per day. You can make a batch private to the user code who created the batch and only that user will be able to view and update those batches. You can verify totals at any given point in time for the batch by clicking on the Verify button after some transactions have been entered in. You can renumber a batch. You can merge two or more batches into one before updating. You can also modify a batch number after it's been entered in and accepted once. Down at the bottom, you'll be able to see totals for invoice amounts, net amounts, discounts, and prepayments that will be populated via your transaction entry. Once completed, accept the Accept button and proceed to Invoice Data Entry. Every invoice must be entered in with a vendor number and the appropriate invoice number. Either type in or look up from the vendor list to select a vendor number. If Use Purchase Order Receipt of Invoice Entry for this vendor is selected in Accounts Payable Vendor Maintenance, you will be presented with a flag indicating that this is more than likely a PO Receipt of Invoice Vendor rather than an Accounts Payable Expense Invoice Data Entry Vendor. If you would still like to proceed, you can click OK. Enter in the invoice number received from the vendor or a user definable invoice number. Tab or enter to save your entry and proceed to the rest of the fields. An invoice date will automatically populate based on your system accounting date that you'll see down at the bottom right here. If that needs to be overwritten, you can do so by simply typing over the invoice date or selecting one from the calendar lookup. Enter in the appropriate total invoice amount and any freight if necessary. Sales tax will be automatically calculated by AP Invoice Data Entry if sales tax reporting is turned on in Accounts Payable Setup Options. If there has been a prepaid invoice or a prepayment created in manual check entry prior to this invoice being entered into the system, you can match up a prepaid invoice number to this new one and have the invoice balance reduced by the appropriate balance on the prepaid invoice. The default tax schedule and terms code will come in from the vendor maintenance account setup. These can be overwritten as necessary on each invoice. As you change terms code, the invoice due date and the discount due date will adjust itself accordingly, as well as calculate a discount amount if there are discount rates set up on the terms codes. If you need to set this invoice on hold at this time, you can specify that this particular invoice is on hold for payment at this time of entry. This will prevent us from seeing this invoice during invoice payment selection and a check run until the invoice is taken off of hold. If airway property in this case is requiring a separate check to be cut specifically for this invoice, we can select the separate checkbox the value for this box will come from the default setup in the vendor maintenance, but can be selected or deselected as necessary. Here we can add a user-defined comment for the invoice as a whole. If this vendor has been set up as a 1099 vendor in vendor maintenance, the default settings will come through from the vendor setup. If this particular invoice and the corresponding payment later on should be posted to a different form type, and or a different box, these settings can be changed. Once the header information is filled in, including the invoice date, invoice amount, and verifying the invoice due date, move to the Lines tab 
in order to specify the different expense accounts for this invoice. If there is a default expense GL account set up for the vendor and vendor maintenance, this will populate automatically and distribute the total amount of the invoice to the account. However, these lines can be deleted or the amount overwritten to a different amount so that there can be multiple expenses on the invoice if necessary. Regardless of how many different expense accounts you have for an invoice, the total of all the lines must match the invoice amount. If there is any amount other than zero in the distribution balance, you will not be able to accept and save this invoice. You can enter in a different line comment for each expense account if necessary. If you need to maintain the lines, you can highlight lines, insert rows in between, similar to Excel, delete rows, or move rows up and down. You can also customize a data and entry screen by clicking and dragging fields between the primary and the secondary grid to help customize and make your data entry a little bit more efficient for you. Once finished entering the expense accounts, verifying the dollar amounts and verifying that your distribution balance is zero and that your total invoice matches the invoice amount minus any freights or sales tax, click accept to save your entry. During invoice data entry, if there is a need to view or maintain vendor information on the fly, you can access the vendor button at the top right and this will place you into the first two fields of vendor maintenance. At this point, you can make changes to the address field, contact fields, terms codes, or tax schedules, or simply just view them. Click OK when finished, and we're ready to update the invoice. To start an update, there's two ways to access the registers. From the invoice data entry screen itself, you can click on the printer icon, which will start our update. If the batch has been closed out and reaccessed later, you can come right to the corresponding register for invoice data entry and start your update from there. Again, if using batch entry, you'll be able to select the batches specific to your user code and proceed with the update. Verify your posting date is correct and change if needed. Select to see full header comments or partial up to 30 characters and either print or preview to begin. On the accounts payable invoice register, you will see the information that we just entered in the vendor number, the invoice number, header information including the invoice date and due dates, total invoice amount, any freight, sales, tax, or discounts, and then the expense distributions. A recap by division if divisions are enabled will come out following the invoice register. This will be a GL recap by expense account. If all that information is correct and you are ready to update accounts payable, click the Yes button. If there is information that needs to be modified first, click the No button and re-enter invoice data entry to make your changes. There's always a two-step update for accounts payable. The first step will update accounts payable. The second step will update GL. This is the daily transaction register. We will preview the daily transaction register, which will be very similar to the recap report by GL account. This is actually what we'll post to the general ledger for the posting date, in this case of 5-31-2010. If this information is correct, answer yes to 
updating the daily transaction register. Thank you for joining me for Invoice Data Entry. I'm Amber Stoneberg.